37 of the COVID-19 patients at isolation centers in Lagos State have been discharged after recovery. The Lagos State Ministry of Health made this known via its Twitter handle on Wednesday. The total number of patients discharged now stands at 358. The patients, five from uh, IDH Chiaba, 25 from Unikong, and seven from the Etiosa Landmark Isolation Centers have fully recovered and tested negative twice consecutively to COVID-19. We have a medical practitioner now, Dr. Hani Ngalato, joining us to take a look at the new rising in COVID-19 cases. Good morning, doctor. Hi, good morning. And good to have you joining us on News on the Hour here on Plus TV Africa. Now, Nigeria... Nigeria is dealing uh, with community transmission as more cases are being recorded. Uh, what should be considered as a matter of urgency to forestall having a precarious situation, if you like? Okay, I would like to say um, the community spread becoming more evident and actually um, it is actually real. Now. So for, for what avoid it, situation it's important that we begin to move inward into our private facility upgrade. Most of our patients usually go to the private setting, about 60 to 75 percent of our patients usually go to private setting before eventually approaching the government. Setting. So I'd like to say for us to solve this precarious situation is important that um, attention be given to the private sector so that there could be an upgrade and then people could be, they could be doing triaging from the private uh, sector or from the private facilities before they move into the government facility. Because most of the exhibition centers at the moment are being handled by the government. But if the private uh, facilities are upgraded, if the private facilities are, are put to standard, able to manage, then they will be able to um, refer the case eventually to the government facility. And then to be holding areas for cases before they move to the, the, uh, the public facilities. All right, Doctor, if you can hear me clearly, I'm struggling a bit with you. However, isn't the lockdown now implies more people may likely engage in human interaction in the course of their daily duties? Are you concerned that this might make more people vulnerable? Did you get my question? Yes, it's definitely, it's definitely going to make more people vulnerable because um, interactions are increasing. People are uh, contacting one another. You know, it's quite difficult to have a, it's quite difficult to have a completely socially distant or physically distant community where we are in this part of the, um, of the world. So it's going to increase the rate of community transmission. Obviously, it's going to make uh, more people, uh, human interaction. People are going to be human work. People are going to be going to um, the uh, social gatherings. Uh, so it's going to actually increase the number of, of uh, community transmission we will be expecting within the next few weeks. Let's talk about the testing capacity of the nation. Do you see any progress at all? Well, I could say the NCPC is doing a lot with regards to ramping up um, testing capabilities of the nation. Um, it's promised to test 2 million people in the next three months, which uh, we are optimistic being uh, that they are putting so much work to do that. Um, and then looking at the private... Uh, sector-driven approach. Um, private sector is also um, helping to acquire more test kits. Yes, there are news, and um, I was made to understand that COVID has decided to um, come up with 250,000 test kits. And if other uh, private um, sector approaches to help to increase these testing capacities, then fine. We are looking at um, where we are likely going there. But I would like to urge the government that Increased testing will give us a better result of what is happening in the country. And so it's important that a lot of attention be focused on testing. This would help to um, this would help tell us the real results, the real results as as um, it reflects in the population. All right, looking at the approaches to you know to tackling the log the approaches to lockdown, rather, and tackling of COVID-19 in other locations outside of Nigeria. What policy can Nigeria adopt, you know, locally to improve the present situation we have? All right. So um, it's important for, for us to know that approaches could differ based on the peculiarity of the location. 
um, listening to one of your panelists from a few weeks ago, he actually told us, Professor Chima Onoka actually told us to prepare for the inevitable, which is to begin to prepare for people flowing down the street. Nigeria would not be able to sustain the lockdown for a very long period of time. In the short run, Nigeria could sustain it, which we were able to do, and this was to help us um, to get to speed with uh, the, um, the virus. However, to be able to localize it in our setting, it's important that we understand that all that physical barriers which would be important for this um, pandemic is, it is to be employed. The use of face masks is very, very, very important. It's important that we encourage our populace because it has been researched that use of face masks could reduce transmission, uh, community transmission by about 50%. So it's important that we encourage the populace to go on the use of face masks. It's also important that respiratory hygiene is encouraged among the, uh, the populace. Personal hygiene, hand washing can never be overemphasized. It's important that we keep emphasizing that. Watching a video recently from Taiwan, I was made to understand that Taiwan has been able to curb community transmission to various more. And this we have been able to do by um, increasing physical barriers, such as use of face masks, encouragement of uh, um, personal hygiene by hand washing and then uh, um, Alcohol use of alcohol based so it's important that Nigeria would step up its, um, its uh, campaign on the use of face masks, on the um, um, the adoption of public uh, personal hygiene, and also respiratory hygiene. I think this would help so much in curbing the spread. If we would not be able to sustain the lockdown um, measures like other um, countries, other crimes in the world. All right, thank you so very much, Doctor, for your time, and do keep safe where you are. <laughs> Thank you, and you too. Thank you very much for having me.